10 life-changing things you experience because you're spiritually awake. Realizing your full spiritual potential is not a destination, possession, or accomplishment. There is no superhuman feat here that only the Buddha could accomplish. That isn't something you could just find even if you travel to India, Indonesia, or any other country. It isn't a rare form of perfection that only a select few enlightened beings, the lucky or the privileged, can achieve. As a spiritual awakening does not occur outside the body, nor is it essential to withdraw from society and live in a cave, common misconceptions about the process have been dispelled. It cannot be lost or forgotten, and is not something you would receive from a wise sage. Become a follower of nobody or nothing at your own discretion. It's an eternal reminder to love and accept yourself just as you are, warts and all. To experience a spiritual awakening, one must be present in this moment, realize that one's negative feelings are shared by others, and release attachment to the grand narratives of one's past and future. It's about welcoming wholeheartedly the highs and lows, the awe and the utter exhaustion, the joy and the pain that make up this amazing gift of life. You will never again desire to isolate yourself from the rest of the world once you grasp the truth that you are life itself. 1. The future is unknown, so focus on the here and now. This is it, the climactic scene from your life's film. Put aside the grand stories of exploring distant worlds and distant times, remembering the past and anticipating the future, seeking for novel and unusual experiences, and of searching for enlightenment. Don't worry about what's gone or what isn't there yet, because you have no control over those situations. Give up the my life narrative and learn to enjoy the present moment. Focus on how your own ideas, feelings and impulses are always shifting and interacting with one another. Always remember that real answers can only come from the here and now. Your ultimate home is in this moment before both space and time existed. And that's all there is at the eye of the storm. Two. Accept your pain and take a deep breath into it. Breathe into your negative emotions and treat them with dignity. Instead of ignoring them and cutting off all communication, show them some appreciation. Think of or imagine your breath flowing through the area, bringing life and love to the neglected and vulnerable spot. Try exposing the hurting area to fresh air, heat and pride. Don't bother attempting to heal or get over it. They want to have their basic necessities met, their pride preserved, and their input encouraged in the ongoing drama. Let's assume suffering has some purpose and isn't constantly against you. Recognize that the key to contentment is not avoiding or shielding yourself from unpleasant feelings, but rather making the conscious decision to accept and make the most of them. Third, the beliefs we have about pain, our unwillingness to accept discomfort, and our obsession with an idealized future are the true sources of our agony. Allowing oneself to stay stuck in painful feelings like loss, fear or anger is a recipe for disaster. We prefer to wallow in the regrets of the past and the fears of the future to accept and make the most of the present. Negative self-talk and resisting what is happening only serve to make us suffer longer. Why have I been invited if I have no idea? Leave the past and the future behind, where you are doomed to a never-ending cycle of searching and striving, and enter the here and now, where you can meet life exactly as it is without judging it or wishing it was different. Stop fighting the current and enjoy the trip. Introduce yourself to everyone, good and bad, happy and sad, in a simple and straightforward way. 4. Don't let your emotions and thoughts define you or serve as a source of reality. Think of your thoughts as something that happens to you objectively. The sounds we hear are like waves on the ocean of you, constantly coming and going. In short, you can't control, save, or get through to them in any way. Like your tolerance for noise, you should train yourself to become sensitive to your internal mental and emotional processes. Respect the thoughts and experiences of all participants by responding with warmth and curiosity. The best way to approach this is to treat them as VIPs. Five. You don't only do acceptance, you are acceptance. It's possible for a bad feeling or idea to linger after acceptance. Realize that it is already a part of the environment and resist the temptation to try to fit in with it. 
because this is often a cloaked form of resistance. Use it as though it were going to be around forever. With this solved, there is no longer any reason to resist or wonder about the permanence of time. It's here now, the time is now. Admit that Deedis is the reality and bow down. Ponder and be curious. Feel free to express any desire, frustration, boredom, disappointment or hopelessness that may arise. Rather than being unrelated elements, each of these components contributes to the whole of the current scene. The sensation of being stymied is crucial to the plot. 6. Getting there begins with being here. All too often, in our haste to attain our ultimate goal, we forget to recognize the significance of each intermediate step and route, causing us unwarranted stress and worry about our perceived inability to have yet accomplished our objective. But happiness isn't dependent on arriving at some future destination or accomplishing some future goal. It's something that can only be felt in the here and now. More essential than the next 9,000 steps, the ones you haven't done yet, all the things you're missing right now are the current step, this ancient land of life and your intimate presence. Breathe, feel the life force that is already within you. We don't always know where we're going, but we're generally content with the way things are going. Make friends with your feelings of doubt, uncertainty and apprehension and learn to respect this holy ground where you may find more questions than answers. It's exciting, original and full of potential. 7. You are not a thinking human being. Rather, you are a conduit through which thoughts pass. Your thoughts are like clouds floating through the vast sky above you. They aren't you, and they aren't reality. All these things are just speculations, rumors, propaganda, assessments, opinions, voices, visions, rewinds, and brief appearances and disappearances. You shouldn't try to turn them off, take them away, or gain control over them. Even if they are very active at the moment, you should still give them some breathing room. Remember that if you can name your thoughts, they don't have to control you. The opinions of others may not necessarily reflect your true nature. You're not the one being contained, rather, you're the silent container. Recognize that you are perfect just the way you are, an empty canvas on which any thought can float. 8. There are no such things as always or never. In reality, there is no such thing as always or never. Remember that they are only lies that add credence to your story of lack and want. You can't say forever years or all day because those expressions don't exist. Only in this instant do you hold any influence. Worrying about what each new day may bring could be exhausting. 9. Don't try to hide your clumsiness. It's what makes you who you are. If you lose yourself in a book, and forget about the world around you, the people in it, and the time right now, revel in this state of bliss, as though you suddenly woke up from a dream. You have the makings of a very intelligent person with exceptional comprehension and interpersonal skills. Over the course of several million years, you have been conditioned, yet now you are free. You should be proud of how well you remember and not hard on yourself if you forget anything. This instant doesn't care whether you forget it. The protagonist's moment of forgetfulness is one of the film's most memorable scenes. Put yourself out of your mind every once in a while. Instead of wasting time trying to meet some made-up standard of excellence, take this experience as a chance to grow in humility. Disillusionment, skepticism and uncertainty are frequent companions on this path devoid of landmarks. There is no destination or definition of success to strive for. There's no place for error because there is no right place to start either. 10. You shouldn't look at yourself through a comparison lens since you are unique. Your trip is unlike any other that has been taken. We are all unique manifestations of the same ocean of consciousness, just as diverse waves might be perceived to originate from the same ocean. Leave other people's expectations out of your self-evaluation. When you start comparing yourself to others, you immediately begin to minimize the value of your unique skills, perspectives and experiences, and you also lose sight of how truly valuable the present moment is. Don't evaluate that here and now in light of some ideal you conjured up in your head about how things ought to, could, or could be. When you give yourself permission to be precisely where you are right now, even if that's not where you imagined you'd be by now, 
you leave yourself vulnerable to healing. Trust yourself and even trust those that you can't entirely trust on occasion. Trusting your inability to trust may seem reasonable, given that even the sensation that you can't hold the moment is already being held. I really hope my little explanation was helpful to you. Feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments area below, and if you want to be notified whenever new videos are posted to this channel, consider subscribing and make sure that the bell icon is turned on. I appreciate it.